Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm Audrea. And this is The Right Crowd, so grab a cup of coffee. Or a delightful cup of tea. Oh, I like that. It's very Christmassy. Yeah. I love, I use it all year round. Actually, I'm one of those people. My Christmas tree is not up all year round, but I do have some semblance of Christmas. <laughs> but I love that. It's timely now, but we digress. Okay. Oh, or a little something on the rocks. <laughs> let's get started let's get started so um today we are starting a new book for our book discussion and it comes with a little bit of a um asterisk so originally this video was supposed to be the anatomy of story mm -hmm. and audrey and i um <clears throat> we called an audible and we switched books not because we aren't reading the anatomy of story we are yes uh, we've shown you guys how dense it is and how thick it is in previous videos when we told you that was the book we were going to talk about we have realized that we both want more time to do the work mm -hmm. we don't want to rush through it just so we can have videos to put out we want to do the work and give you guys the best um discussion on the book so we picked another book to do for now and we're going to do seven figure fiction why did we put this book because everybody's saying how good it is yeah. so we were like all right let's give it a shot so it is called seven figure fiction how to use universal fantasy to sell your books to anyone um by t taylor her name is um theodora taylor she writes primarily romance um but she wrote this now I don't write romance and Audrey doesn't write romance, but we got stuff out of it. Yeah. Like it was good. And it was almost like, wait a minute. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like books and movies do that all the time. Why? Oh my gosh. Why have I not thought of this? I'm so glad she put it on paper. So um, this book is broken down into three parts. And so what we have done is normally we do five videos her book we do an intro tell you what we're doing why we picked it a little bit about the book and then we break it down into four this one is not as big as what we normally pick and it has three parts so you guys are getting three videos that's right yeah and then we will um go back to john truby and the anatomy of story um we should have enough time to to do all that you know with thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, all of those things. We'll have plenty of time. Plenty of time. I'm most of the way through the book and I've done a lot of the exercises, but, and we also, if you didn't watch one of the, our previous episodes, we both met John Truby and had a chance to sit in one of his seminars or webinar. Well, it wasn't a seminar or a webinar. It was an in-person session at a conference. So, yeah. And we discussed that um, conference in one of our bonus videos, actually the one that was posted just before this one, um, about 20 books to 50k so if you want to know about that conference be sure to go back and watch and uh, watch that video like it of course and like and subscribe this one yay please okay so we're gonna get started yes I feel like I didn't do this in the last video I gotta do that <laughs> <laughs> okay so um first section on this oh the I will say one thing that um, I wish this book had. What's that? Table of contents. That would be, that would have been handy. Um, yeah, there's, there's no table of contents on this one. So um, we oh, can't, oh, oh yes. Um, so speaking of, since this is the introduction, I just wanna say, all right. So she said that uh, it's written by T. Taylor and her full name, um, as far as we know, is Theodora Taylor, um, but I have, been in a few clubhouse rooms with Theodora Taylor and, um, and she's talked about this book, but about the table of contents. If you buy this book on Kindle, there is a table of contents. Oh, which is I have it on Kindle. I should, I should look at that. Yeah, so um, when you were talking about parts before, I had, there's one page or well, three pages, one part one, part two, part three, that has the, the part on it. And I had not seen that I because in this, on, in the physical book, 
the page numbering and the, the parts is not as easy to, to, to figure out. But in the um, virtual version or the Kindle version, which I have up on my screen, um, there are there's a table of contents. And I've got a lot of my highlights are in that particular version, although I have stickies in this one. So, so okay. depending on how you get the book. Cool. All okay. right. So section one is titled How Universal Fantasy Secretly Changed My Life. Um, the beginning of this talks about um, the kind of person who would pick up this book and read it. It talks about her history of what accolades she doesn't have. Mm -hmm. um, but then it also talks about what universal fantasy is and um, how it shows up. So my understanding of universal fantasy, and correct me if I'm wrong, Audrea, or if you got a different opinion on this, because just a reminder guys, we don't discuss this before our videos. We just come on here and discuss it like a book club. Book so. club for authors. Club. Yes. Okay, so um, the way that I see it is it's things that are in movies and books that appeal to a broad category of people that wouldn't necessarily be something that you would be inclined to want to happen to you in real life. Now, some of them would be, yes, please, but others, not so much. Um, I believe when we discuss section two, she points out, all the universal fantasy and Beauty and the Beast and Cinderella. Yes. Which you just don't think about it, right? Um, but she also points out, because she, she does write romance, there's a lot of things in romance that doesn't happen to us in real life, but it's the reason people continue to read romance because it's the things that we were, we're like, oh, that would, that would be kind of nice, but yeah, no. So let me read about this fantasy world, right? So... Um, part one goes into what she did, how she did it, how she did it wrong. Yeah. Um, and, um, hoping to help you figure out, uh, how you can make changes to maybe not even your book. Maybe it's just your blurb on the back. Like maybe you didn't put in a universal fantasy in your description even though your book may be full of it, if you didn't put it in your description, mm -hmm. someone who's looking for that thing that's going to strike their fancy, you didn't hit it, even though your book may have it. So she also goes through, and I, because it's, I, I read it in one day, guys. So I don't know what day I read this in, but she points out that um, if you don't catch them in the blurb, which I think we all know this, if you don't catch them in the blurb, they're, they're not going to, unless someone said, hey, you have to read this book, right? right. They're not going to pick it up. So you have to make sure that you're, you get your blurb correct. And she goes through this book and tells you, not all the universe, she calls them UF, like throughout the whole book, it's UF, UF, UF. So um, I'm glad it's not the other way around because that would have been bad. Right. Um, <laughs> as I was saying that, I was like, I'm so glad that wasn't um, but she talks about all the different ways, um, like one of her biggest sellers was about a red-headed, uh, red-haired Viking werewolf yeah. who, who kidnaps a woman and takes her away, right? But yet somehow a red-haired Viking werewolf is what piqued people's interest because it's a, it's a fantasy. It's not something that Oh, good God, I hope never, like, really? Werewolves? <laughs> yeah. That happens in real life. We have a problem. <laughs> exactly. And I loved her description of that um, book and how it, and she uh, gave a sample of her blurb. Uh, there's samples of blurbs from a lot of her books in here or in other people's books and things like that. But I would, I like, I like paranormal. I mean, you guys know that I'm a cozy mystery author and that's my, strong suit and my um that's my wheelhouse but I also read fantasy but 
I prefer vampires to shifters generally. So I don't typically read a shifter book. Um, werewolves are not my favorite, even though I like puppy doggies, but werewolves, I'm not. Eh. So I would never have just, someone said, you should read this book about a, um, were a redheaded werewolf Viking. I'm like, you lost me at werewolf. <laughs> I mean, redheaded, red, well, you lost me at werewolf. Uh, but when she, but uh, when I read her blurb, which is filled with universal fantasy, I was like, really? I want to read that. I'm like, I don't know why I want to read that, but now I'm going to read that. Yeah. It's, it's got um, the butter. It's got the butter, which is the part that I was going to point out. Um, she says that universal fantasy is the butter. It's the ingredient that makes everything from pastries to steak to vegetables way more delicious. Um, and she's saying that, simply put, universal fantasy is what makes your book taste good. Yes. She also points out, which I think is cool, is because some people are like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's just a trope. Mm, no, no, it's a, little, it's a little past that. And she explains that in two simple sentences. Trope is what is your story's what it is. Universal fantasy is your tropes, why it's good. Okay. So you have tropes, but you turn your tropes into universal fantasies. So like a romance, there's a love story. Great. Now throw in a, a red-haired uh, vampire, Viking, wolf, something or another, and now it's become a fantasy that everybody wants to read. Right. Right. Well, so yeah, exactly. Or one of the other ones that she mentions in here, and of course, you you guys know this is Author Craft Book Club, but you um you want to buy the book. We highly rec I highly re recommend this book. Yeah. So you can read along and follow along with us. Um, so we don't give away all of the good stuff in the book. But um, one of the universal fantasies that she mentions, which I did not realize it was one of my favorites, is um your provincial life, that provincial life, where the heroine or hero, whatever it is, gets taken away from their provincial everyday humdrum do the dishes life. And now they're in this one, this magical world or this expensive <laughs> world. Yes. <laughs> and which one is that? Um, that's Aladdin. Oh, that's Aladdin. Okay. So, and it's Aladdin. But it's the same. It's got the it's same the thing. It's the same Even thing. Even though it's a princess, She's still swept away into something new and exciting that she never thought she would get exactly. to. Ex so it's the same thing. We won't, we don't think of it yeah. because she's not ordinary, but everybody has a different level of ordinary. Yes. I mean, I'm not Kim Kardashian, right? So Kim Kardashian's idea of fantasy might be different from mine, but we all have a fantasy that speaks to us. Which is why those billionaire romances are so um, popular because you, uh, a lot of them, one that I read, I like accidentally read a billionaire cowboy fantasy. I'm like, I, or it wasn't a fantasy. It was a billionaire ca uh, cowboy romance. And I didn't even know that was a genre or a trope or any of that stuff. I was bored. And I think it was like I accidentally bought it for 99 cents or actually what probably happened was the blurb was written so well. I was like, well, let me read more of that. Click buy. And I read it and it was great. It was delicious. It was yummy, but it was, um, she was a waitress and he was a billionaire cowboy, but she didn't know he was a billionaire. He just came into the restaurant and liked her and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden she's whisked away from being, a, you know, a single mom waitress in this one horse town to going to billionaire expensive parties and the dresses and the whole, you know, it's out of her provincial life into this whole new world like that, um, which is yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and Beast, or um, I can't remember, Belle. Belle is the name of the Belle. character in mm -hmm. Beauty which is one of the ones she mentions in here is whisked out of her she has a whole song about this my provincial life and she gets whisked out of that into the you know the big mansion with the, the books and all the stuff and the you know the the, the beast basically and servants yeah. that love to wait on her and that's one of the other ones that she mentions but I oh my gosh oh there was one thing one of the quotes that um, I highlighted um, and I'm going to read it on my Kindle is it's difficult verging on paralyzing to put words to paper because you feel so uncertain about whether your scenes and situations will hit the spot with potential readers. So when you apply universal fantasy to your scenes and plots, whether they're 
uh, mystery or romance, fantasy, paranormal, um, or thriller, your stuff is going to hit the spot. You're more likely to hit the spot of more than one multiple, may hopefully thousands, millions of readers because you've applied these concepts. And she points out that done well, you'll get readers outside of your target audience. Yes. That's which is what you're going for. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going for. You don't, if you have the same people reading your stuff, you're, you're always going to, and they're either going to get tired of what you're selling, or if you take too long between books, like you, you don't have any new fresh fish in the pond. Right. So universal fantasy brings in the fresh fish. And we all like our fish fresh. So you go from these readers and you expand it, not because you've changed your genre or anything, but just because the universal fantasy, you're hitting the mark of more people, more people are coming in. And I just love the examples she gives about how you're writing something so specific, like interracial romance. And then you get people who are uh, not, usually wouldn't read interracial romance because it's got universal fantasy applied to it for people from every race or, you know, reading her the, these particular books way right. outside of their normal genre right so yeah so i the that's pretty much part one of this book um it she just goes through and explains why it's important what it is and basically why you should listen to what she says because once she discovered what universal fantasy was she made a couple of changes, but not in her books, just in her, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Blurbs? Her blurbs. She and changed her blurbs. She even, I think she may have even changed a couple of covers to go along with the universal fantasy that was in there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in part three where she discusses, um, she, I think, I think it's in part three. She writes a blurb first and then she writes a book based on the blurb. And she also says that if you're writing, if you've written your book and you write out your blurb and there's no universal fantasy in it, you need to change something because the universal fantasy is what's going to pick up those readers outside your target market and keep your current readers engaged. Exactly so. So is there anything else from part one that you wanted to bring up? Gosh, I was looking at all of my highlights in part one. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's definitely one thing. I love, she gives um, a lot of the times when I read uh, author craft books or nonfiction, like all these author craft books, um, I usually skip over, um, I, I do this in podcasts too, um, not about authors, but about any of the, the stuff where they start where I was living in my car on welfare and I just and then I just these rags to riches story I know all about the rags I've lived the rags <laughs> tell me how you got to the riches and how I can get there and let's jump to the meat of give me the the, the the give me the the facts Jack on how to get there but I really loved the beginning of the book and, and I know you you and I disagreed a little bit on that but um I really love the beginning of the book where she talks about um how she had only put out a few books and then one hit and she couldn't understand why. And that's what got her to um, the universal fantasy and discovering that and then looking for that everywhere. And then, oh my gosh, seeing it everywhere. And um, she writes uh, in that, the first section, um, I carried a, she put, for some reason, I couldn't put my finger on why that book got to the top 100 in Amazon. And as you know, if you get, as an author, you get to the top 100 and it wasn't just in one genre, it was across Amazon. She, she said like, well, I need to repeat that because you know, the money is just basically being. Right. But she couldn't put her finger on it. And that's what led her to discovering and writing this book about once she discovered universal fantasy and how to apply it and then how to repeat it. So it's about repeatable success. And so that's right. one of the reasons I wanted to read this book. And um, so that's all I've got for part one or the intro. The only other thing I want to point out is Audrey mentioned that we both disagreed on part one on whether or not it was 
she got something out of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, just get to the next part. Right. So if you're like me and you start reading it and you're going, oh my gosh, keep reading. It's worth it. Normally it may have been a book that I would have put down because of the first part. However, two reasons, multiple people have said, oh my gosh, this book. And I knew we had to record these videos. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, well, I have to read it because we said we were going to read it and it's only this big. So, I mean, it's not going to take me that long anyway. Um, get through the first part. It's worth it. Yeah. And I'm going to uh, do one or uh, cover one more thing. When we, um, we don't talk about our notes or anything until we get to these YouTube videos, but we have both said, and if you watched our trailer for this series or, you know, the right crowd, we don't review bad books because we don't want to waste <laughs> your time and we don't want to spend time reading bad books. I mean, if we, so when she said, do you want to read that book? And I said, uh, I've already read that book. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she, so she, we needed to make a decision. Are we going to read this book together or are we going to do it on the YouTube? That's the, the only decision we usually make on a book is, are we going to keep reading or is this book good enough to do on our YouTube channel? So you only hear good books from us. Yeah. Well, our opinion of oh, Yeah. Our, yeah. Books we recommend. Are you, and you can see that we have differing opinions but it's, it's well worth it. So um, for Audrea, she's like, yes, first. And I'm like, just, this is Amy speaking, just slodge through the first part, read it because there, there is good stuff in it. Um, and parts two and three will make sense. If you've read part one, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get through part one. So, all right. Anything, uh, anything else on this one? Uh, nothing else on this one. So if you have not already done so, do like and subscribe and do go out and go yes. get the book so you can continue yes. to the next part one or part two and three. And you have plenty of time to catch up because like I said, I read it in a day. So go get it.